Hello and welcome to another episode of Crime Tuck English. We've just started uh, this series of stories related to crime and investigations. And uh, in today's story, I bring to you the story of ISIS in India. It was back in 2015 when uh, the threat of ISIS began to be recognized uh, in India, when uh, there were a few young men who were attracted uh, to this ideology, the violence of ISIS. And uh, initially there were only four young men from Kalyan in Maharashtra who were said to have joined the group and in fact traveled to Syria to be part of the terror group. That's when in the security establishment, a lot of concerns were raised. But uh, it was still felt that, you know, uh, this is uh, restricted only to a very few young Muslim men in the country. For a country like India that, that has a sizable Muslim population, uh, just four young boys joining the group shouldn't be a matter of alarm. But slowly, there were inputs pouring in that there is a bigger group, many more who are getting lured to this uh, ideology and that's when uh, investigating agencies, intelligence agencies and the security establishment began to sit down and think about the larger policy, the larger strategy to deal with this threat. I was also following on what the Indian strategy is going to be. I would speak to officials in intelligence agencies, to people in the Home Ministry. And there was confusion at that point of time on you know, how one should go about it. Slowly the numbers kept increasing, you know, and for the first time in 2015, uh, there was a report that said that in all 11 young men, including the four that I mentioned uh, from Kalyan in Maharashtra, are part of the Islamic State. All these people came from within India and that's when we could see the alarm bells ringing. As I was uh, following the story, you know, my bosses told me that uh, this is a story that needs to be uh, followed closely because remember ISIS was becoming a global phenomenon. It wasn't just one or two countries uh, uh, that, uh, you know, were facing this problem, but you had the entire Western world, people from Europe, people uh, from Australia, getting attracted, lured to this ideology. As and when uh, cases in India began to go up, the numbers began to go up, uh, uh, I got, I got uh, an information that, you know, uh, there are certain uh, young men who were intercepted by uh, intelligence agencies from leaving the country and uh, that India is following a different kind of a strategy to deal with them. Instead of just picking them up and putting them in jail, there is uh, some sort of a so-called de-radicalization program where they're not being put in jail but being counselled not only by the police, by the elders in the community, in the society, and they are being watched but not put in prison because it was believed that if they are put in jail straight away, uh, that might be a bigger problem. So the story that I'm going to share is uh, of uh, a group of four young men and also a fifth man uh, in Hyderabad. So the four young boys were in touch with each other. The fifth uh, man that is a key character to this story uh, wasn't really part of the group of that four, uh, but he too got layered and wanted to join the Islamic State, travel to Syria, live there and what they called was serve the ISIS. I happened to meet these uh, young men and uh, one of them, uh, as, as I said, you know, who was not part of the, of the group of four friends, uh, was in fact willing to leave his pregnant wife, who was seven months pregnant, all alone, leave his home and travel to Syria. And this man had a decent job uh, in Hyderabad. Uh, but there was something uh, that lured him uh, to join the ISIS. He had made all arrangements because he was from a decent background, had a, had a good job, he had, he had an MBA degree. 
uh, he got a uh, visa for to travel to Turkey. Uh, what he told me was that, you know, uh, he was in touch uh, with a lot of ISIS headhunters uh, who were giving him instructions on what to do once he reaches Turkey. So while he got the Turkish visa and he was on his way, all preparations made, he was also sent some money. Little did he know that he's being closely watched and uh, he was under scanner of the intelligence agencies. And in fact, on the day he was supposed to leave uh, his home in Hyderabad, come to Delhi, from Delhi he was supposed to take a flight to Istanbul, there was a knock on his door. To his surprise, he saw uh, the local cops uh, at uh, his uh, doorstep and they confronted him. They took him uh, for interrogation and it wasn't, it didn't take very long for him uh, to break down and uh, tell his story and what he was planning to do. Now, uh, he wasn't arrested and in fact, I did speak to him. I traveled to Hyderabad, as I said, and I spoke to him in his home. And uh, he said that, uh, you know, now that he's go gone through this de-radicalization program, he, he, he feels that he was walking into a death trap. Those were his words. And uh, obviously that death trap uh, did not have an exit option. If he reached there, there was no coming back. And then he said that he's thankful that uh, his life has been saved. And by then, uh, you know, his young baby, a young little girl was born. And uh, he said that uh, seeing at my four, five month old young uh, girl, I can never think of leaving her and leaving my home, leaving my wife and, you know, travel to a place which is literally hell. So this was one, one man who obviously, you know, literally came out of a dead trap, as he said. Uh, but there was another group of four friends. And their story is even more interesting. And uh, that's what uh, I'll share in more detail. There were, there were these four boys, once again, uh, you know, completely layered by stuff on social media. Uh, one of them amongst those four who was perhaps uh, the smartest of them all, uh, he told me that, you know, he's, he was never a religious man. Uh, he had little to do with uh, religion. And he would lead a very normal life, uh, just like any young man in his young 20s. Uh, he was studying engineering like many others uh, in Hyderabad do. Uh, he had a decent uh, family business, so there was no problem, you know, no, no problem at all. As far as uh, uh, finances are concerned, no family problems. It was a normal, happy, young life that uh, he, along with his three other friends, uh, were leading. They had... Uh, dreams and aspirations just like uh, any other young man uh, their age would have. But it's uh, rather interesting uh, how on social media uh, just a small click on his Facebook uh, you know took him to a completely different world. He told me that uh, he clicked on one of the videos, he saw that video uh, which obviously was uh, a lot of propaganda being used uh, by ISIS uh, uh, to, to lure young minds like him. And uh, then he said that it was just a chance click that he made, but uh, within 24 hours, uh, you know, his Facebook uh, was filled with these kind of videos and he started to watch them. And then slowly he started to interact with people. He joined a Facebook group. And before he knew it, uh, you know, he was in some sort of a cage where all they discussed was radicalism, uh, what's going wrong with Islam. And, uh, you know, it was more of uh, showcasing themselves as victims. Uh, at an impressionable age, a young man can get affected by all of this. Uh, this is what he kept telling me. And uh, that's when he started to share uh, these videos with his friends. They started to discuss things. And uh, very soon, you know, reading this literature, watching these videos, this happy group of four young men in their 20s decided that they will travel to Turkey and then finally go to Syria. But obviously it wasn't so easy with uh, 
you know, some people already getting intercepted. And they had an inkling that they are being watched as well. So they tried for their Turkish visa, these four boys, uh, and uh, they, they did not get visas. Because perhaps there was uh, some kind of an information, some kind of an intelligence input about uh, their activities. Uh, intelligence agencies felt that uh, this is a big deterrent now that they have not got a visa. Perhaps they'll stop making efforts to travel to Syria. But uh, obviously uh, they had crossed, crossed the threshold and uh, come what may, uh, these uh, four men wanted to travel to Syria. And in their conversations uh, with the so-called handlers that they had uh, online, uh, what uh, this man told me was, uh, who goes by the code name of Museb, they had given, all, all four of them had given themselves code names to talk to each other and also uh, talk to these uh, so-called handlers uh, that they had online. In fact, it was only Museb uh, who was in touch uh, with a handler uh, who uh, said that he is a Syrian-born uh, Australian uh, to him and he said that once he comes here, he will uh, be taking care of uh, all of them. And uh, that's when they decided that there is a plan B. Uh, Museb was told that uh, they need to travel to Calcutta. From Calcutta, they will uh, cross over to Bangladesh somehow. They will get Bangladeshi passports, they will have a new identity. And on those Bangladeshi passports, uh, they were supposed to get Turkish visas, travel to Turkey, and then make their way crossing the border into Syria. So the first step of uh, their plan was successful. They did reach uh, the desired place uh, in Calcutta where they were told uh, that they have to spend some time. It was a lodge in the new market area. And when I was speaking uh, to all these four boys, uh, three of them were extremely shy uh, to give the details. Uh, and all of them kept saying that, you know, uh, please make sure that our identities are not uh, revealed. I did tell them that I am a journalist and I'm speaking to them because I'll put together uh, a new story uh, about how young men in India are being lured and how they were intercepted uh, by agencies and after being intercepted and after going through rounds of uh, de-radicalization, they are now getting their backs, uh, lives back on track. So I was very transparent with them uh, about this and uh, so they also said that that's okay sir and uh, we will speak to you but uh, under no circumstances should our identities be revealed and which was perfectly okay with me and so in my news reports I did not reveal their identities I used these code names that they told me they had given uh, each other and Museb is the name that I'm taking again and again because he was the so-called leader of this group of four and remember the fifth uh, young man that I spoke about was not part of this group but at some point of time he did come in touch with Museb uh, who was the ringleader. So when they reached Calcutta, uh, the Telangana police was in, actually tracking them and uh, uh, they were tracked to uh, a small lodge, a small hotel uh, in the new market area and in fact uh, this uh, man Museb uh, told me that uh, you know, he had gone down to get some food for his friends and that's when he spotted uh, a man with a thin moustache and uh, he ran up uh, to his friends and he said that this could only be somebody from Telangana. He said he had a typical Telugu look and they knew that you know the Telangana police has actually tracked them down and their plans of uh, traveling to Bangladesh and then to uh, Syria are uh, all but over. All four very soon taken in custody, brought back to Hyderabad, interrogated uh, by the police. They reveal a lot to the police, tell them who the handlers were. It's interesting that some of the handlers were actually Indians sitting outside India. At a later stage, uh, investigations actually uh, traced them down as well and uh, they were brought back uh, to India from uh, the UAE, uh, the uh, National Investigating Agency arrested them, charge sheeted them. That's a separate story altogether. Uh, but once uh, 
they were nabbed, uh, these four young men, uh, as I said, that uh, as part of this experimental strategy, they were not arrested. Uh, their families were called, uh, taken into confidence, uh, elders from the families and whoever could counsel them. Uh, they were part of that counseling sessions and finally it was felt that, you know, uh, these young men uh, will not repeat uh, what they were doing and uh, another chance was given to them to lead their lives uh, normally. But that didn't mean that they were let off the hook completely. Every step they took, every move they made, who they spoke with, what they did online, all that was being tracked. There was no other way out. I spoke to several officials uh, who were part of this so-called operation of uh, tracking down uh, young ISIS recruits in India. Uh, and they, they had just one thing to say that, yes, it's important not to arrest them because we want to give them time to make sure that they can uh, get back to their lives uh, as soon as possible, but there was no way uh, that uh, they would not be under the radar of intelligence agencies. And that's what was happening. Uh, going back to Moseb, who I said uh, was the ringleader, he was the most talkative out of uh, the five, four, five young uh, people that I spoke with. And uh, he kept on saying that, you know, he was never religious, uh, never offered namaz, uh, was in fact uh, quite uh, indisciplined when it came to religious practices, uh, didn't really believe uh, in religion. And uh, he said that he himself was surprised how he got uh, lured into something which uh, had a very religious uh, kind of a genesis uh, to go to start with. Uh, after I finished speaking uh, to uh, all of them, I also happened to speak uh, to a lot of officials uh, who were part of uh, intelligence agencies, security establishment. And they specifically asked me about, uh, one of the officers specifically asked me what I think about these boys. So I said that, you know, they genuinely seem to be young men who got strayed because of various reasons. Uh, then that officer asked me, what, what do you think about Museb? So I said that uh, it seems that Museb needs to be watched a little more than the others. And that officer just smiled at me. And I said, then I asked him, sir, why, why do you smile? So he said, uh, I feel the same. He needs to be watched more than the others. As time passed by, we kept on getting small stories of uh, young men like them getting attracted to ISIS, some joining ISIS, some had to be arrested, some were again let off but being watched. Uh, but few months down the line, Museb was finally arrested. And uh, I can share his identity now with you uh, because it's a matter of record. Uh, his name is Abdullah Basit. Uh, he is in jail as of now and he was identified as a serious uh, recruit of the ISIS in India. Uh, of course, I would like to uh, put a disclaimer here that uh, he's yet to go through a trial. Uh, he deserves all the chances that anybody gets uh, to prove uh, themselves as innocent in court. In fact, the onus of uh, proving guilt is on the investigating agency. But uh, Abdullah Basit, who was uh, codenamed Museb, uh, was a very, very serious uh, alleged recruit of the Islamic State who not only wanted to travel uh, to Syria but in fact was given the responsibility of uh, recruiting many more young men like him and at one stage even his sister was in fact uh, part of this uh, group uh, and wanted to travel with him uh, to uh, Syria and be part of the ISIS. Now uh, the fact remains that uh, you know, since then, several people have uh, got arrested uh, uh, as far as uh, uh, the investigations into Islamic State is concerned. The National Investigation Agency has been uh, carrying out uh, separate investigations of uh, similar cases. Uh, but it still remains a mystery how these young men who were leading perfectly normal lives 
were getting lured uh, by this kind of ideology and uh, my experience why why i'm sharing this story is because uh, it's rare when you get to speak uh, to people and get a sense of uh, their lives when you speak to them and you know they tell you that they wanted to be part of the islamic state after i spoke to them uh, many of my friends uh, relatives people who knew me uh, read my reports and they said that uh, you know what did it feel to actually speak to somebody who was a potential terrorist and uh, my my reaction is that when i i didn't uh, realize for a minute that they were a potential terrorist because whatever they told me was uh, when, i mean this they just spoke like any other normal normal uh, human being a normal uh, a young man their age would speak like so that's why it becomes even more intriguing uh what was it that was uh luring them to uh this kind of a very violent ideology also uh another anecdote i'll get back uh, to the story of these four five young men uh you know there was there was so much of uh venom one can say that was they were probably poisoned and just by seeing these videos online uh that uh, they felt that what they want what 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 they intend to do is the right thing to do and uh, there is no way that uh, they can you know leave their uh, motive their objective uh and get to syria uh but fortunately in their case uh, they were intercepted and other than one of them who i said uh, was taken in custody the others probably are leading uh, normal lives uh, but it just goes on to show that uh, you know this was uh, this was a kind of uh, uh, an era where uh, uh, where they they were very happily walking into a death trap as uh, one of them told me uh, now he's uh, leading a normal happy life uh, but lots of questions have been raised on this uh, so called strategy that was being used uh, by uh, indian agencies not to arrest them uh, from the onset and give them some time uh, to uh, get back uh, to their lives de-radicalize them so while all these uh, you know uh, operations still continue some people are taken in custody some are not uh, but the fact remains that uh, uh, there are so many of uh, these uh, young men who were later taken in custody also a lot of women uh, but many many were left they were not arrested or formally uh, charged uh, under terror laws and uh, they were given a chance because it was felt that uh, uh, they 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 had strayed and as a result of that we have uh, many who've got back to their normal lives uh, but this will continue because uh, islamic state is a story that's not going to end it's been around for the last 6 7 years in fact we just had another case uh, of uh, uh killings in austria where uh, somebody from the islamic state who was arrested and then released earlier uh is allegedly behind uh, the gori crime so once again questions being raised on this kind of a policy whether to release people after they are arrested or uh, you know charge them under terror laws and make sure uh, that uh, they are punished to the maximum this debate will go on but uh, these kind of stories of these uh, these kind of young men uh, will continue to take uh, the new space and why i i shared this story was because perhaps this was the first time that uh, there was a very personal account of young men who were want, wanting to join the islamic state uh, who spoke to a journalist and uh, not only them i even spoke uh, to their families their families were also unsure you know how something like this could happen uh, but that is the power of social media and how it was uh, being used uh, to uh, lure young men still there are lots of discussions uh, in the security establishment how to deal with it 
but obviously there is no foolproof way on making sure who has crossed the threshold and should be taken in custody or who needs uh, to be given some time and go through a de-radicalization program to make sure uh, that they can lead normal lives and at the same time the threat of terrorism can be countered with. So uh, this was uh, one story of how young ISIS men were lured uh, by the terror ideology. Some of them got back to their lives but as I said while they were given another chance there was at least one amongst them who repeated the same offences and finally had to be taken in custody and is facing terror charges as of now and remains in prison. We'll keep bringing these stories to you regarding investigations, police, crimes, terrorism. Keep watching and please subscribe to uh, our channel Crime Tuck in English. Watch out for more such stories soon. Thank you very much.